Hello everyone, welcome back. Uh, recently I've had a couple of questions about the application process, uh, what the package should look like, uh, some questions about uh, resumes. So today we're going to dive into each of those areas and uh, try to give you some more information on that. Um, so we're going to talk about the cover letter and the resume, uh, the application packet, what are some of the things that are required um, to be submitted when, uh, when getting rid getting ready to submit your application packet to a squadron. Uh, and then at the end, we're gonna talk about uh, how to be more competitive. Uh, I've got a question on that uh, because, you know, you have test scores, you've got letters of recommendation, but what can you do to set yourself apart? So uh, we'll, we'll dive into each of those areas. But to start, the cover letter and the resume are pretty universal for any job that you're looking to apply for. And the things that I want you to focus on is the cover letter needs to be about that squadron. You need to do your research, understand what that squadron does so that you can apply some of that research into the cover letter. You want to be genuine and you want it to be a personalized letter. So don't have a cover letter that you're going to just copy and paste different squadrons um, names in the subject section or throughout uh, and then just spew it out to everybody. Uh, as somebody who reads the cover, le cover letters and resumes, I can tell when it's been mass generated. It's uh, not a genuine letter specific to that unit. So uh, just be careful with that, take your time. Express the true reason why you wanna be there. Maybe you have heritage in uh, that location or that squadron. Um, it's the aircraft that you wanna fly. You wanna stay close to home. Like there's a million different reasons why um, just be genuine about what it is that you uh, want and why you want to be a part of that squadron. Um, and then moving on to the resume, the resume, everybody gets wrapped around the handle about how to write a resume. My advice is pick a format and stick with it. Don't be changing your resume every time because if you asked a thousand people, you'd get a thousand different responses on what the resume should look like. You know, a flying resume is a little bit different than a professional nine to five type resume, true. Um, but the things you wanna focus on are your flying credentials uh, and be, you're gonna be an officer in the Air Force, you wanna focus on your leadership. What have you done in leadership roles that would prevent or that would uh, allow you to be um, a, a good officer in the Air Force? So, you know, achievements, um, leadership roles, part of, uh, you know, your student body presidents, uh, organizations, any, anything that you can throw that has a leadership style to it uh, will work. Because in the interview, you may be asked, uh, what kind of leadership style do you have? Or what kind of leadership have you done in the past? And so you're gonna wanna be able to draw from those things that are on your resume. So um, in a little bit later, I'm gonna show you exactly where you can find a resume template and it's specific to the Air Force Reserve Command. It's in the UFT guidebook. And like I always say, if you're applying to a company and they provide you a template, then I'd go with that template. Like they're giving you the answer, go with that answer. So uh, in a little bit later, I'm gonna show you exactly where to find that and then how to uh, download it to your computer. Uh, in terms of the, the application packet, it's pretty standard for everybody. There's going to be things that everybody has to have, and then there's usually going to be one or two things that may be unique, may be unique to that squadron. So, um, as always, the cover letter and the resume are first. Um, then you're going to have to have a bachelor's degree, and you're going to have to show college transcripts. They're going to want to have all four years. Uh, college transcripts, official copies, so have them sealed. That's something that you can do prior uh, to applying. So if you've already finished college, go ahead and get those because it could take a couple of weeks, depending on your school, uh, to get those. So you can have those saved on file further. Um, so you're not waiting on that when you're ready to apply. And, uh, and then the Air Force test. You have your AFOQT and your TBAS. Those two combine to make a PICSUM score. You're gonna want all of those scores together. Three letters of recommendation are also required, three to five, depending on the squadron. Uh, you want prominent members of the community or uh, current or prior military members. Uh, if you can find somebody in that squadron, in that wing, um, somebody who knows somebody in the squadron, as far back as you can go, get, uh, get somebody to write you an excellent letter of recommendation. They do uh, look at those and 
if for some reason you can make a connection with, oh, my neighbor knows a guy at the squadron, um, that will go a long ways in uh, getting your packet um, further in the process. So um, we'll, we'll talk about how to find some of those resources online. Uh, I'll show you on my computer where to find those, how to download those. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll talk about uh, how to be more competitive. Okay, so we talked about the cover letter, the resume, how to put a packet together, all the contents that you need in order to submit a packet. And uh, I want to show you a couple more resources that you can use that we talked about earlier. But uh, Bogey Dope is going to be an excellent resource for you as well as uh, the Air Force Reserve UFT guidebook. So I'm going to show you how to get those uh, and then uh, kind of the best way to use, utilize those. So right here I've got the Bogey Dope website and I just want to show you if you click on articles right there at the top is an article that I wrote for Bogey Dope uh, a couple months ago. It's uh, about the state of the UPT pipeline and how things uh, have been affected from COVID what uh, the future looks like going forward. So I invite you to check that out. Uh, in addition, you go over here, go over to job boards. They've done an excellent job of uh, showing all the available postings, uh, all the different aircraft on the left-hand side, the locations, uh, the squadrons, and then the deadlines for the packets. And then if you go ahead and click on uh, the view tab, it'll give you information about that unit when to begin submitting packets when you can expect the next selection board will be and then how to apply and like we talked about there it is the application packet all the information that you should have uh, air force forms or if you're prior enlisted and looking to become an officer otherwise all the other ones uh, we talked about uh, one other resource i want to point out is the air force reserve um, command UFT guidebook. So if you just Google UFT guidebook, it's the first one that pops up. Uh, you click on that link and then this page comes up. And if you see in the big bold top, on the top, it tells you to save the uh, file as an Adobe to your desktop. So if you go ahead and do that, um, it will provide all the attachments. I think there's 24 or so attachments that are uh, available as part of this um, guidebook. When you pull up the uh, saved portion, here are all your attachments on the left hand side. And the one I wanted to focus on is the UFT application resume. Uh, so when you guys have questions about what's the best resume to use, uh, what's the best format, well the Air Force Reserve has one specifically that they've formatted for you in the way that way they want it. So to me if a Employer is gives you a template. You should use that template. It's it's a uh, very basic straightforward You can click on these save them to your desktop and uh, there's a lot of great information in here as well that you can use So start browsing through those Okay, so I hope that helped uh, now. We're going to go into how to be more competitive the the thing that I've realized is that the test scores are very high for a lot of people I thought initially that the test scores would be a very strong way to weed people out um, right off the bat. But what I found was everybody's got 90s or above, pilot scores, nav scores, pick some scores of 90 or above. Um, most of them have private pilot's licenses or above, all the way up to CFIs, double Is, uh, even uh, regional airline pilots. So in, in that realm depends on where you're applying to, but the you know the fire squadrons yeah you're going to have to have a private pilot's license that's that's a must um, you're going to need to have excellent leadership and you're going to need to know um, or get to know somebody in that squadron so um, keys to be competitive it goes back to personalization it's like the cover letter and the resume the emails that you send to the squadron need to be specific they need to be personal to you and to the squadron. Don't just shoot out a mass email and just replace the squadron's name each time and uh, because we, we can tell and we'll automatically delete those emails. So um, it's kind of like a mini cover letter. With, when you email the squadron initially, tell them why you want to be there, uh, what connection you have to the squadron and, and why you want to 
um, how you can make that squadron better. Um, the next one is going to be the most important, and it's you have to go out and meet the squadron. They're not going to hire you if you've never been there. They don't know who you are. You're just a name on a piece of paper. So you have to make the effort to go out, meet these squadrons. It's what we call rushing the squadron. And it may take two, three, four visits over the course of six months or a year. But if that's really the squadron you want to be at, you want to, pr you want to provide that opportunity to get to know you personally. And then they can then say, man, this guy's awesome. He's got great scores, but also he's a really good dude. I think he'd fit into the squadron really well. That's going to take you all the way through the interview. So that's the most important piece is you have to get to know the people. You have to get to know the hiring manager. You have to get to know everybody in the squadron, officer, enlisted, the support staff, everybody, because they all have a, have a vote at the end in the interview process. Um, it's not just the pilots. It's everybody who's who's in that office. So um, when you do go and meet uh, the squadron in person, be sure to say hi to every single person you meet. Make sure that they know your name, your story, so that they can recall. Um, because at the end, we, we do take a poll about uh, how everybody felt that person was. Was he or she genuine in the process? And did they actually uh, want to be here? Did they click? And is that somebody that you'd want to have around for the next 10 or uh, 20 years? <clears throat> so uh, those are some of my key points to how to be competitive. It goes above and beyond just the test scores and having a solid packet because like I said, every, it's very competitive. Everybody's got a solid packet. Like most people have a private pilot's license with additional time. Some people are CFIs, double I's. I'm not saying that you need to go out and if you have a private pilot's license that you need to go get an instrument rating. I don't believe that's the case. Um, that doesn't do anything for you and it just costs you more money. Um, I, I'm just saying that these are the type of people that are applying to these positions. So minimum, private pilot's license, awesome. Uh, maximize your scores as high as possible, 90s and everything. And then you really gotta nail that personal piece. So uh, I hope that helps. I, 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 Provided a lot of information. I know uh, if you have additional questions, please hit me up in the comments. Uh, I'm glad to answer. Uh, also check out um, my website, youralternateroute.com. I'm also on Instagram. And uh, as always, check out my book. It's got all this information and more. It'll get you set up um, in the immediate steps that you need to get to uh, the application interview process. And we'll see you next time.